Affinity, thank you for following. I haven't sorted my blooming lights out, have I? I do this every time. It's a schoolboy error. I'm not a, uh, I'm a, I'm a writer first, and an editor first, and I'm a streamer last. All right, let's, uh, let's not forget that. Let's plug this thing in. And uh, my kids have gone to sleep. Well, my kids went to sleep like an hour and a bit ago. Um, and I'm not prepared. Let's sort this out. Let me sort this light out. It's going to be a bit dark for a second. How are you, Affinity? Right. There we go. Is that okay? Turn this down. That's better, isn't it? That's, that's a bit better. Right. Hello, hello, hello. How is everyone? <clears throat> yeah, I'm not too bad, thank you. Yeah, I'm busy. I, I can't remember the last time I had a stream. I, I would love to be able to do weekly streams. I mean, that was my goal originally, was to do weekly streams. But um, I just don't seem to get the time. There's always something to do. This week, I haven't been able to play... Uh, I know it's first world problems. I haven't been able to play any games. It's just been relentless. I've had a lot of stuff to do. I've been doing this History of UK Esports series and um uh this week i wrote both the articles so that's taken a lot of time as well I had to prep them and you know get them signed off and all of that stuff um but we've got we've done 18 articles now and we've got six more to go i think six more to go and the, the other six i think i only need to write one or two of them i've tried to get help from other people to do those articles so yeah hey john how are you got a fan on in there Do i haven't no do you know what it's i saying this to my wife the other day, when we had our renovation a few years ago, <clears throat> I don't know what it is, in the day, it's sort of, that building, it's, it's very cool, and it, I, I don't know if it sort of blocks the sun a little bit or something, um, it's a little bit hot in here, but it's not too bad, it's, uh, I'm okay really, um, because it's an outdoor building as well, I can just, you know, it's, it airs quite well here, it's, uh, I can open the window and stuff. Oh right, do you know what it is? I, th I think it's it might be this. Is it this? Let me try and move it. Is that better? Where is the humming coming from? Hello, I crazy. How are you? I hope I haven't upset you too much with the uh, UK Sports Org article. <clears throat> Let me know if that's better, um, John. I know there's a stream delay. Hi, hi Rev, how are you? Good evening Dom, excuse the delay, I'm getting back to your Discord messages, hope you had a good week. Hey, no worries, no worries, I'm, I'm bad at getting back to DMs as well, to be honest. I am pretty bad. I'm not sure where to start this week, where shall I start? Um, I mean, uh, the Esports Awards stuff, why don't we come on to that in a bit, because I think that's got a lot of, that's uh, generated a lot of headlines this week. Oh, sorry, the Esports Awards, the Esports World Cup stuff, the caster announcements. I saw literally just as I was going live another announcement. Um, actually, we'll talk about some of these stories and then I'll come on to that. I'll do these ones quickly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cover these stories and then I'll, I'll go on to them. It's not terrible. Uh, let me, hang on, let me have a listen.
Yeah, there is a little humming, isn't there? I don't know where what, where that's coming from. I've basically got I've got a baby monitor here because my wife's away this weekend, so I need to know if they wake up. I need to be able to hear them and all that stuff. So um, that might be what's doing it. There is a clock you can hear as well, I think. But I, yeah, I don't know what the other humming might be. It could be my my PC is very very quiet. Well, if it's not too bad, John. Let's see how we go. Oh, I ain't too fussed about it. iCrazy oh, says, I like to promote the new uh, smaller orgs on my pl platform and respect your craft. You can do whatever you like, mate. You do whatever you like. I mean, when I started Esports News UK, I was um, writing about a lot of the the smaller... Um... Where's my logo gone here? Why is this... Oh, don't worry about it. Um... Uh, it, you know, a lot of the orgs I wrote about back in the day were the smaller orgs, and then over time, um, you know, articles on smaller orgs are nice to do, but they just don't get many clicks. So that's why I, I lean more towards like the bigger orgs in the UK. But I do like to support smaller ones as well. So I did give one of those orgs you recommended a follow, actually X something they're called, not Giant X X Ravel or something. I hadn't heard of them before, to be honest, but I've given them a follow now. Hey Mel, how are you? So yeah, I mean, uh, I, I had it was a really nice response to this article. I did a sort of. Hey Moulton, how are you? How's it going? Thanks. Uh, Moulton wrote our recent Starcraft history article, which if you haven't checked it out yet, we have a um, we have a page here at the top left um, of the site, and it's a series of history articles, and these two, Moulton wrote these ones. History of UK StarCraft 2 Esports and Epic Land StarCraft Power Rankings as well. So, um, yes. So, yeah, I had a really good response to this. I've, I've, I was going to do it as a top 10, and then I thought, well, there's, there's slightly more than 10 that I want to put in as the main orgs. So I've gone through, and I enjoyed writing it, and I've just shared my honest opinion as well on the different orgs. This isn't based on metrics it's not based on like revenues or size or anything like that it's just orgs that um i've I, I think are notable and worth shouting about and um, i've just shared my honest thoughts on them um now bear with me one second my, my wife is away this weekend and she's just texted me saying we got here i'm just gonna say Kids all went to sleep. Okay. Okay. There we go. Um, Mel says, doing good. Enjoying my last few days in Bournemouth before heading back to work for summer. And I crazy says, I want to see some of these big orgs do more than they're doing. Yeah, and I've put that in the article as well. <coughs> I crazy that, you know, we've got orgs here, based here, haven't we? Like, Fnatic and Giant X and Guild and some of them haven't you know really done as much as they could have done I put I think Giant X have mismanaged some of their talent over the years Fnatic you know I want to see more wins from them I want to see more um, you know Giant X have just been a mid table lower tier LEC side haven't they forever I want them to push on a bit, do things and you know, same goes as well for like Resolve and Endpoint and orgs like that. I want them to get more wins and hopefully they'll come. So um, yeah, and and I know it, it made me laugh, right, I crazy, because you said, what about these orgs? And you've listed loads on Twitter. I, I've put them in, right? I, I wanted to put an honorable, a notable mentions section for the uh, for the orgs here. So that's what and I've put in a lot. I've put a lot of, uh, a few of the well-known Irish orgs. I've put. I've mentioned some of the football clubs we've got here that are doing esports stuff, and a few others as well. Like, yeah, the CS ones you mentioned. For me, I haven't put these orgs in like the top ten, the top fourteen, because, uh, you know, you could argue these orgs are quite similar to, to one another, and, you know, you look at these orgs I've included. They're notable for various reasons you know reason gaming's been going for 20 years quadrant is massive lando norris doing good stuff in halo like these all stand out for me um and 
I want these orgs to prove me wrong, you know, and I've put in here, maybe next year I'll do a follow-up article, an update article, and see where, if some of these orgs have grown to become more prominent uh, ones in the UK. So, yeah, I um, had a good response to that. If I bring up the um, Twitter here, where are we? Yeah, had had some good good response from people. And this is why I set up Esports News UK, you know, to shout about talent, be positive where I can be positive, just highlight these all good orgs. And this, this is nice, you know. I know it can't always be nice all the time, but uh, this is why I do what I do. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. It seems to have done pretty well. And it will do well on Google as well, you know. And, it, like, you know... Shout out to orgs like Nocturne because I haven't put them in the top 14. I've given them a notable mention and there's the fact that they're still over the moon about that is really nice. You know, they're humble. Um, Don Jake made me laugh. According to this, Ruddy is in the top 14 UK orgs. I was thrilled to learn this until I heard that there were only 15 UK orgs. I did mention SAF. Yes, I did in the honourable mentions. Yep. No, Deli Ali's not still with Giant X. I think he left ages ago. Um... Yeah, I mentioned S uh, uh, SAF. I was going to put them in the top 14, but I saw... I, you know, I don't know how much they've done in esports recently. It didn't look like they had many players on their books uh, at the moment. But what Cal's done has, has been pretty good. So, um, Yeah, reason sharing this, you know, saying had a bit of time, let this sink in a bit. One of the oldest esports teams in the UK, spanning 20 years of legacy, um, and globally as well. I mean, that's amazing, isn't it? They said we've been ramping it up over the past few months for the next step in our evolution. Actually, I did see a tweet from them earlier. Um, you know, Paragon mentioned, Viperio. Um, thank you, Nafi B, saying it's a good read, had a good insight. Um, yeah, really nice. Uh, actually, Reason tweeted the other day saying that they're announcing a new... Um, they're announcing something new. I don't know if it's been announced yet. Yeah, there we go. We'll be launching our new influencer network on Friday and heading up, heading this up is Jova Watch, uh, Sarah. Give a nice warm welcome to Sarah. So I'd like to hear more about this influencer network, what other things Reason are doing. But yeah, um, thanks everyone who shared this, who read it. You know, I've, I've Googled top UK esports orgs and the article's up there now, which is good. Oh, Jack, how's it going? Oh, yeah, I thank you, mate. And, and, and I feel bad as well because I want to... I've explained my reasoning, right? If I just did this as top UK esports orgs... I mean, this took me ages to write this. This took me just over half a day because I want to put care and attention into it, right? I don't want to just do it as a quick thing. Slay the Monitor. Hey, how's it going, Sam? Thank you for, for following. And uh, your comment made me laugh, by the way. What did What, what did Sam put here? Um, where is it here? Sam put, uh, I demand you remove into the breach, literal trash orc. Okay. Um, you, you are funny on Twitter, uh, Sam. Uh, good luck, mate. Good luck with everything. And have you, have you announced your, have you announced your fifth yet? I saw a tweet about, um, own pixel will not be joining the roster as our fifth. Smoo, you stated the reason to be a skill issue. Uh, on Pixel, have I pronounced his name right? I'm not a CS, you know me, I'm a League of Legends guy. He's not joining the Into the Breach Shuffle roster. So it's explain the jokes here, um, Sam. Give, give me an in-joke because I'm waiting for you to announce your fifth so I can do an article saying your team, the new Into the Breach team is announced. I've been waiting a little while on that. Oh God, I can't keep up with the chat. MQS, how's it going, MQS? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about some of the stuff that's happening. Our crazy says, I want to see what Reason do next that will fully revive them as they've been quiet at times. Regus says, Reason Gaming are still around. I remember their Polish, Polish League of Legends lineup from 2014 to 2015. That was slightly before my time. So, yes, they are still around. Uh, hello, Sam. I heckin' love Dom. Oh, that's, that's kind. I love you too, man. He's put... Uh, it's Adam nine one thirty. He's back, and I don't know if you're if you're joking or not. Uh, tomorrow, probs. Viperio ha ha says, "Let's go, Dom. Thanks for the at in the article. Appreciate it a lot. Great work in the article. I'm I'm honest with my faults, right? You're never gonna get um, 
BS with me. And and if I'm reporting on something that I have a strong opinion on, sometimes I, I can't put my opinion in, right? But I'll always be fair. Oh it, my God. What have you done? You naughty, naughty person. MQS, thank you for the sub, mate. I appreciate it. Th- thanks very much. Um, you know, it, when I do write an opinion piece, you are going to get opinions oh from me. Oh my God. What um, have you done? You naughty, naughty it's person. ZMS Esports Studio. I feel really bad, Damon. I still haven't got round to doing the stuff I said. Uh, it's, it's When we get to the middle of July, I know you're waiting forever. Oh my God. What have you Riga, done? someone's done, a, naughty, someone's naughty done a, uh, a thing, haven't they? Someone's done a... Um, Gifted. Viperio Big Mall. Oh my god, five gifted subs. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh my god. Uh, what have you done? You know a naughty person. Um Oh hang on. We've we've got several gifted subs here. It's um Sam is gifted five oh my tier god. one subs. What have you done? Bloody hell you guys, know, thank you, you very person. much. I need to update that um sound by the way. That's a very old sound when someone someone Donated like a lot of money to me, or oh my god. for me it was a substantial what have you done? amount. You naughty, naughty person. And that's what I said. Oh my god, what have you done? You naughty person. But someone said to me I should change the sound to. Um, am I going to be able to? Oh find my this god, now? what have you done? You Nathan naughty, Edmonds naughty will be person. happy with that. Shall I? Shall I text Nathan now? Shall I? I, I let, let me let me text Nathan. I'm just going to text him and say. Um, oh my god. What have you done? Someone has you naughty, gifted naughty you a person. Sub on the E N U K Twitter, uh, Twitch even. Let's see what he says. He might join us in a bit. Um, oh thank you very God. much. Everyone. What have you done? Mertz X. You naughty, thank, thank you person. for the, the gifted subs. Uh, what's this saying here? Level three hype train setting a new record. Keep going until the clock runs out. Okay, we've got three minutes. Uh, how do I get that? Oh, oh my I'll, God. I'll leave it. What have you done? Um, you naughty, naughty person. It's saying gift or cheer. Why would I gift myself? I'm not going to gift myself. Right. I, I, I want to get it out the way. I can't see the chat that well. I'm being a boomer. I'm being a complete and utter boomer. Tobias Sec, thank you very much for following. Thank you, Tobias. Um, right, where was I? I'm trying to catch up on the, the chat here. Final trials were today. Okay. Adam Adam is back. You, you, are you joking with me? Um Let's have a look here. Drain CEO says Dom Sacco saved my life. Drain CEO, I can't remember. I've got a list. Of my boomer brain, I've got a list oh of my God. usernames. What have at the you back. done? Yeah, I know. You naughty, naughty one person. Here. I can't remember Drain CEO who you are. I, I, I know. I know you are someone in esports. Let me know who you are. Um, oh my God. What Sam have you says Dom forced me. I'm curious. This is a pre-recorded. Person. He's got up to my head. Oh my god. MQS says good what it's have you time done. Dom got you off know, his ass and did something. Person. Hey, excuse me, I've worked damn hard, thanks very much. There we go, I told you Nathan would be here. Pog, Viperio Big Mall, thank you, Bab. There we go. Thanks. Oh uh, Nathan, I thought god. I'd let you know. What now you, you can done? spam you know, you know uh, the Dom Sacco face emojis if you want to, right? You can do the uh you know that nonsense. Enjoy. Oh my god. What have you done? Ah, friends you with know, Mitsuko. You know Talked your ear off a few times since 2015. Okay, yes. But is your Twitter handle Drain CEO? Because I feel like it isn't. Um, Mitsuko, by the way, doing really good stuff. Yeah, what's that you've done there? What's that emoji there? Um, Mitsuko's doing well, isn't she? With with Dot X and the, the fact that she's working on this, the League of Legends. Um, uh, what is it? League of Legends Awards with, with Cage on Shocks. That's massive. I have reached out to her actually. I've said, look, if you want any support, if there's any way I can help be a media partner or something, League of Legends is my thing. So, um, yeah. A catch up is overdue. Yes. I, and I can't remember what I was saying now. Oh, yeah. I was going to go. You, you, you're mucking about with me here, aren't you? Uh, Or are you not mucking about with me? Because Adam is a IGL for ExoClan. They recently won a, <coughs> um, uh, an endpoint thing, isn't it? What, is it UKRC or is it UKIN? I always forget. Yeah, UKRC, sorry. Um, 
they recently won that, didn't they? So I don't know if you're joking or not. Because if you're if you're not joking, I want to get on and write stuff here. Yeah, the smoother pickup is big. How smooth you been, Sam? Are you are you uh are you managing him? Okay. The the loose cannon of UKCS, good old smoother. Um uh, good luck to you guys and I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how you how you get on. Oh look, Into the Breach now has four accounts. I, I noticed that actually. So C F C S Tarkov. Uh with Dota joining in the future. So you're getting back into Dota, are you? Because when I was writing this when I was writing the Into the Breach section, I did I could have written more, right, about you know, you, you early in the early days you were doing Dota stuff, weren't you? I haven't really put that in there, I focused on what you're doing now. But if you're going back into Dota, that's interesting as well. I hope you your funds, you know, you spend your funds wisely, Sam. Let's see how you do. There's people arranging meetups on the Esports News UK Twitch. This is, I'm, I'm happy with it. Oh, ExoClan team is split, right? There you go. See, you can tell I don't follow UKCS super, super closely, right? Because I have to cover all the Esports. It's not Adam, really. It's Joel. He's a he's a crackhead. I don't know. You you listen. I, you're you're becoming like Don Jake, right? I when when Don Jake tweets, there's a, a you know ninety five percent chance, it's 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 just nonsense. It's a joke. It's silly, and I can't figure out what's what's true or not. So if I see him tweet something that's actual interesting news, I often have to DM him to say, look, is this legit? I actually did it with you guys, didn't I, uh, Sam? The other week when you had that um, uh, uh, the jersey, right? I had to DM say, "Look, is this actually true?" By the way, I hope this is still happening. I know the rules thing. Um, I hope that is still happening. If, if people haven't seen that, you can Google it. Um, anyway, I said I'd talk about other things, right? So I will talk about other things. We've covered the, uh, the, the basically what I was saying was before I go on to the esports uh, World Cup stuff. <clears throat> when I do an opinion piece, you're always going to get my honest opinion. One thing I've noticed since uh, there's Nathan Edmonds again. Oh, we did a new episode by the way of Boomer and Zuma. So if you want to hear me and Nathan talking about things like the closure of insomnia and other bits and pieces and esports awards and esports world cup we were chatting about that at the blast premier series with loads of gaming chairs upside down behind us a very weird setting we literally had nowhere else to, to see it in the press area it was pretty crazy um but yeah since i've been gone full time with esports news uk i've noticed something because i have more time in the day to write news stories i cover the news stories quicker when i was running esports news uk in my spare time I didn't have time to do that. So when it got to an evening and I'd be writing about a slightly old news story from that morning or from the day or two before, I would write an opinion piece on it instead because that would make the, the article fresh, right? It would offer something beyond the initial news. Because I'm writing stories a lot as they come throughout the day, I don't write as many opinion pieces. I want to write more more opinion pieces, really. I, I don't, you know, and I enjoy writing them you know, I did uh, my top five moments in UK League. I've done, you know, top orgs. Uh, I did a piece on the esports winter, a piece on the rise of Saudi. And I like guest pieces as well. You know, this piece from uh, League of Legends player Governor on, you know, the league, the UK League community and, and stuff like that, the positives of it and all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, Nathan Edmonds, the boomer. I'm the zoomer. Yes. Thank you again, guys, for the subs. I really appreciate that a lot. You've pushed me up above the sub goal. I need to raise this sub goal, don't I? Right? It's, it's you pushed me right up. I don't stream enough. I don't deserve the 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 sub help really. But thank you. So anyway, that's that. That's opinion stuff. I'll run through some quick news here. If you didn't see, freaks for you gaming had a bunch of layoffs. They announced this week. And they've been fully acquired today by Nodwin Gaming, um, which is a Singapore uh, sub subsidiary 
of Nodwin Gaming Private Limited, which is a subsidiary of an India Indian company, Nazara Technologies. So, um, freaks for you have been completely bought out. I don't know if this will improve their communication. I've obviously, people who know League of Legends in the UK and Nordics will know they were the operator um, between 2022, I think it was, and mid-2023. There we go. Um, obviously, did a bunch of things that didn't fully resonate with the community. I'll say that in nice terms. They shut down um, local grassroots tournaments like the UKEL in favour of a five division NLC only league structure and which led to things like this. Uh, VSG Stewart, how's it going? Thanks very much for the follow. Um, the UK Ireland uh, League of Legends community is up in arms over the tournaments being shut down by Riot and Freaks for You. I won't go into all of that now. But I, I wanted to cover this news because Freaks for You are a name that's well known in UK and Nordic's League of Legends. So, uh, and the, the layoffs they had recently, uh, their CEO, Michael Hainish, said, last year we already went through layoffs, put some people on short-time work, which also has been in effect so far this year to just, due to some expected projects not materialising, after careful consideration, we've unfortunately concluded the necessity, the necessity of additional reduction in workforce to stabilise our business. So this happened, and then literally three days, this was three days ago, then they've announced um, this. they've been acquired. And it's been made through a share swap valued at up to 30 million euros. So Nodwin already had a stake in Freaks For You, 13.5% um, stake, and this is going up to 57% stake. And the remaining 43% will be held by uh, the existing CEO, uh, VP, and co-founder of Freaks for You Gaming, who will remain shareholders. So, um, so this is this is slightly confusing here because I've used a press release on this, but this doesn't make sense, does it? Because it says here Nodwin. Reading this back now, it says Nodwin increased their 13.5% stake. In the business to 100 percent oh there we go existing investors of freaks fuel become shareholders of nodwin right it does make sense okay yeah so that happened um there's other things i can say i'm waiting a little bit uh, until later in the year uh, I did think the quote was slightly odd from the Freaks for You CEO saying, "Ready or not, here comes the disruption we are set to bring to gaming and esports." I mean, they've, you could argue they've already disrupted um, UK League of Legends. Yes, Charlie. Ch Hello, Charlie. How are you doing, mate? Yes, it is their second round of layoffs because he said they had a bunch last year, right? Um, I think for that one last year, I just retweeted it. But for this one, I thought this was slightly bigger news because it's it's more layoffs and they've been acquired as well. So let's see how they change. I hope Nodwin can improve their communication. Um, their communication, in my opinion, wasn't great when they were running the NLC. I, I couldn't get great information out of management at Freaks For You and nor could a bunch of other people. So hopefully they improve. Um, yes, I did. I, I, Naif, I have, I have seen JFC a lot, right? I've seen it. I know, I've known, I have known what it means. I just forgot in that moment, right? I'm from a generation. You've got to remember, Naif, right? I'm from the generation that is uh, MSN, Instant Messenger. When you know, we invented LOL. Um, like what you up to, all that stuff. What what you up to? What was it? W U U two or whatever the hell it is. Um, I can't think of other things at the moment. Oh, we invented God. those things. What have you done, Jiggy? You thank you for the person. sub. How's it going, Jiggy? I'm going to see you at the the British Esports Student Champs finals in uh, a few weekends' time. Um, looking forward to that in uh, in Nottingham. 
you know, and now this the JFC stuff and all of this. This is the next generation of internet speak, isn't it? From you Gen Zs. I, JFC was not a thing uh, twenty years ago when MSN and all that stuff was on the rise and Skype and whatever else. Oh so my God! I did have to. What go have you done? Day. You know, Jack, you know has someone done another train here? No, it's, these are wow. Jack converted from a prime sub to a tier one sub. Thank you, Jack. There's been so many subs tonight. I'm gonna get it out. And for UK esports, I, I appreciate the support, everyone. And no, don't no one accuse me, please, of, of being a toy. I had I'm waving this flag before on a stream as a thank you for people subbing to me, and people were saying I'm being a pro Tory. Excuse me, the, the Tories don't own this flag. All right, this is the Union Jack. The, the Tories don't own this flag. Don't let them take that away. Anyway, you can tell I'm bitter about that still from what people said. I crazy says MSM was good days. I crazy, you weren't around for MSM, were you? You you're a youngster, aren't you? Um, Charlie said Nob went on already owned a bunch. Yes, it was thirteen uh, something, wasn't it? They bought for cash for a while back, and now they did a share exchange. That's it. Yeah, I've just gone with their press release today, um, uh, Charlie. Be interesting to see how things change there. Like I say, Stuart says, bring back Bebo. Not a good time to support England. Uh, MQS has done it. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I will say, um, I will say, people in this chat, with the election coming up, I'm in an interesting area because it's a new constituency. They've changed the, the sort of boundaries, the borders, for where my consti constituency falls. I think it's called Waveney Valley, where I'm based. Here we go. Let's have a look here, look. Constituency of the House of Commons, um, further to the completion of the 2023 periodic review of Westminster constituencies, it will first be contested at the 2024 general election. So I'll be sort of part of history here. My area will be. This is a new constituency. And do you know what it's looking like? You're not going to believe this. We've got what? how many green seats do we have in the UK? It's one, right? I'm pretty sure um, Brighton has always been green, right? I think. Can anyone educate me on this? Where's there we go. One one C. It's always been Brighton. It's been Brighton since twenty ten. Uh, yeah, here we go. Brighton Pavilion. This year, it looks like Green are going to get in to Waverley Valley where I live. So I'm going to be living in a green area, which I'm quite happy about. That to be honest, it's a bit different, isn't it? Um, so we all know. Uh, I, I, I won't turn this into a politics stream, but anyway, I, I thought, um, here we go, look, here's an article written, this published today on The Guardian by Patrick Barkham. Waveney Valley ought to be a Tory heartland. Could angry voters turn it green? This is happening. I'm quite happy. I'm happy to be living it. I've, I've always lived in blooming Tory areas, so I'm happy about this. Anyway, let's not go um, too far. Charlie says, that's huge. Green Party have been popping off, to be honest. Can't wait for Chester King to stand in Sunderland, MQS says. Affinity says, John Winkle for MP of Kettering. That is something I can get behind, Affinity. John, are you still in the chat? Because, you, you, listen, if if um, if Wizzo's run... Uh, did Wizzo run stand as an MP? I'm going to have to look into this now. Um... So I did an article on this ages ago. Um, it's not. It's not going to find my article, is it? My my um, my SEO can't be very good on that on that article. There we go. <coughs> this is. I wrote this nearly five years ago now. Insomnia founder to stand for Parliament outlines plan to support UK esports industry. He didn't get in, sadly. That was it. Candidate for Romsey and Southampton North. So listen. If Craig can go for it, John, you can go for it too. But yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting, you know, the the fact that um, it's going to be a green, it could be a green area. And I, I like that it's a new sort of 
um, area. Yeah, it's tactical, isn't there, Sam? Sam says, I've got to vote Lib Dems to strategically vote. That's pretty much what I'm doing. And I, all, of all the strategic sites I've checked, they've all said green is the way to go in my area. So I'm going to probably go for green. MQS says, I would vote for John Winko. There you go. You've got at least three votes in this chat, John. That's it. Wizzo stood as a Lib Dem. He doesn't even live. He doesn't even live in Kettering, but John is sure as hell is the king there. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I think Labour are going to win. Now, Craig, because the thing is, there's not much else in terms of opposition, is there? I, I really, you know, I don't want to push politics on you all too much, but I really hope uh, reform don't get much um, because that I, I, I worry that reform are going to get a lot of the older voters. I don't want to. Yeah, I know I'm generalising. But I do feel like reform are going to get a lot of the older voters. So the, what, I don't know what kind of chaos that's going to cause, but we'll see, won't we? Anyway, that's that's that news. Um, I'll just cover off a couple of these stories really quickly and then I'll go on to the Esports World Cup stuff. We had a, a, a football manager esports tournament, a $100,000 football manager esports tournament. I couldn't believe this in my inbox. And then I was... I don't know what it is with with um, news stories. I keep getting news stories recently, and I'm I'm thinking, oh yeah, it's quite interesting. And then buried at the bottom of the press release is Arsene Wenger's the ambassador for this football manager esports tournament. And here's a video with Arsene Wenger, and I'm like, what the hell? Um, you know, this is it's this is quite I'd say quite a big story in esports. We haven't really had a a football manager tournament like this. We have had some. We've had some at Insomnia, haven't we? And I've put in here, we've got, um, uh, where is it, Kevin Chapman, a, a content creator in the UK, broke a world, a football manager world record at Insomnia last year for the longest sports video game marathon. 50 hours he played it for. See, Sam knows more than me. Sam is better educated than I am. Sam says reform will get 15% of the vote. That's not good. Uh, M MQS said, uh, Dom, did you see Jezza posing with Gunnosaurus? Hey, you, you say Jezza po posing with Gunnosaurus, right? So let me find something here. I'm guessing you're talking about um, uh, Jeremy Corbyn. Are you talking about Jeremy Corbyn? Let me try and find something here. Right, give me, give me a minute. Um, so I've got something for you here. Uh, I'm just looking through. My vault of my OneDrive pictures. Bear with me one second. So I've got something here. Let me try and find this. This was um, trying to think of the the date or the match for this one. Oh yeah, I think it was at Arsene Wenger's last match. Here we go. Here we go. Bring this up here. There we go. You say you say uh, you say Jezza posing with Gunnosaurus. Jezza's posed with Dom Sacco as well. This was this was Wenger's last home game. My, I went with my dad. My dad parked. I got out the car, and my dad was a bit hungry, so we thought we'll have. We were early as well. For, oh, we we'll have we we'll eat some sandwiches in the car before we go to the game. And I've so saw, saw a guy hurriedly walking past next to the car, and I've said to my dad, "Was that Jeremy Corbyn?" And he's like, "What?" So I just turned around and I was like, "Jeremy, can I get a selfie?" Um, sometimes I do my unprofessional. Hey, I'm not an esports event, right? I'm not an esports event, so it's not unprofessional. Unprofessional for, for me to ask for a, a selfie. Um, I hope that's the right Jezza you're talking about, anyway. Um, Hey, Cafox, how's it going? Russ, how are you? MQS says, I'm actually sad for you, Dom. This could have been your chance to interview Lee Professor. Oh, he's talking about Jeremy Clarkson. Oh, bloody hell. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I haven't tried to interview... Um, I haven't tried to interview 
ask them thing. I could put the request in. I'm pretty sure they won't uh, accept it. Maybe if I'm a big site like an IGN or a Dixerto or something like that, uh, they might. They might, but I think it would be unlikely. But anyway, um, I quite like this video, 442 Forever of Arsene Wenger walking around, changing shapes, changing like, uh, you know, objects, moving objects around to make the 442 formation. Who would have thought Arsene Wenger would be used in a promotional video for a football manager esports tournament? Not me. So when things surprise me, I think, well, they're going to surprise other people. I mean, this has got 3K likes, so, um, yeah. Anyway, and I'm an Arsenal fan, aren't I? So I'm going to be a little bit biased and do some Arsenal stuff. Some, I had a few, someone DMing me, by the way, saying, Dom, do you have more info on the tournament, on the format? I was like, no, but I can ask the PR. I did ask the PR, and they just sent me back a, a response, which was like, this is all the info we have for now. We'll be back with format in the next few weeks or something along those lines. So watch this space if you are interested in that. Oh, you don't know who it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so hang on. MQS, Jezza posing with Gunnosaurus. No, I didn't. Uh, do you have a link, uh, MQS? Send, send me the link on Discord if you can and I'll bring it up on the stream. Um, uh, Last few stories, we had Natives Esports Academy announced, so the Irish Esports Org, who also own the Ireland Esports Collegiate Series, are now going to be using a sort of path to semi-pro, right? They're going to take the best, or try and find the best collegiate esports players, give them positions in Natives, or help them sign to other teams as well. So that's I think that's a good thing. And they've got a little diagram thingy here. There we go. So they're going to try and pull, you know, get the best student players and bring them to the League of Legends first team, for example, right? Through the academy and, and then bring people through to their uh, co streaming team as well. Um, that makes sense, doesn't it? If they, are, if they own the collegiate series as well, I guess it makes sense to do that. Uh, Red Bull Golden Letters, any Tekken fans in here, any fighting game fans, MQS, you probably saw this news, right? There's going to be a London offline qualifier and an offline qualifier in Japan and then online qualifiers in North America and Europe. So this event is coming back to the Red Bull Gamersphere in London in late September. And there's a bunch of uh, big name players, Anakin, Arslan Ash. Jocker and a few others that are going to be involved in it as well. So that's that happening. And it's got its funny format, hasn't it, where you have to get perfects and all that stuff. And MZ, who is a community manager at British Esports and also has got a gold medal, Commonwealth Esports medal, um, North, Northern Irish Esports player and community manager, has won... Best LGBTQ plus contribution to esports award at the Gaming Awards 2024. So congrats to her, and there were a bunch of other wins in there as well. Um, Baldur's Gate devs, Larian Studios, and so on. But MZ was the UK. It was the UK angle there. Uh, MZ's from Northern Ireland, so uh, congrats to her. And I've got all the winners in there as well. I quite like actually. This was a lot bigger this year because they teamed up with IGN. I think, I think, um, yeah, it's part of uh, IGM's Summer of Gaming. There we go. So, yeah, so those are the stories I, I wanted to talk about, little stories I've done this week. So if I go back to, if we talk about Esports Awards, Esports World Cup. So Esports Awards is obviously a part of, has this deal with Saudi, doesn't it? And I forgot, actually, I forgot. It's a three-year deal this thing this was from a few weeks ago wasn't it this is a three year deal I, I, for some reason I was thinking it's a one off it's not a one off it's a three year deal with the Esports World Cup Fed, uh, Foundation the Esports Awards is going to be held on August 24th in Riyadh right, as part of this Esports World Cup but again this is what I'm talking about a press release where a, an important bit of info buried right at the bottom of this press release oh by the way London's going to host part of the Esports Awards 
What? Like, I thought it was going to be fully hosted in Saudi, is what you announced a few weeks ago. Now London's going to be hosting part of the eSports Awards. Um, it just says later this year. It doesn't give a date. I had, I did have a source tell me earlier that the eSports Journalist of the Year Award um, is going to be in London. I wish it was there last year because I would have been able to attend. I couldn't afford to go to Vegas. It was too expensive. It was too crazy. Um, I just couldn't get out there. So... Um, I'm not expecting to be nominated this year because I haven't, you know, broken a lot of stories. I haven't got a lot of big scoops. I haven't got, yeah, yeah. Worlds is coming to London. I did all that stuff last year, but um, I will be there because it would just be good to say hi. I mean, some people have said to me, "Oh, I respect it, Dom. You do what you want to do, but I wouldn't go to the esports awards." And everyone's got their own views, right? Um, I wouldn't go out to Saudi for it um, but the fact that it's in London I think will be good networking and, and so on be good to see people like I say I don't know when it is yet but the London part of the event will feature a, a focus on the pro categories so esports player of the year esports team of the year all of that stuff yeah hey Jacob how's it going Jake how's it here Jono is in London this year uh, I expect you to be there Jake, you were added as a, a nominee, weren't you, last year? I expect you to be uh, nominated again this time. So that's happening. Um, and what a week. What a, a strange week. I don't know if people have seen the, the Quickshot news, but the um, former LEC caster Quickshot is going to be hosting this. Uh, sorry, he, 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 and he was a part of the live stream. Right, that announced the finalists, these first few finalists for the Esports Awards, um, along with Veracity, um, UK host. I'll come on to Quickshot in a minute, because he's also going to be hosting part of the Esports World Cup, and there's been a lot of hoo-ha on social media about that. But finalists, um, there isn't a lot of UK talent in the finalists here. Cadrill is up for Streamer of the Year, and uh, Cadrill is also up for Esports Personality of the Year, and James Banks is up for Esports Personality of the Year. Other than that, there's not much UK in there. I know Fnatic are London-based, but you know, London headquartered, but they're global, aren't they? Um, there's not a lot of UK stuff in here. Esports Insider nominated as well. Congrats to Esports Insider. I do think I did a tweet on this. I do think this is a little bit stale. This list. This. Um, this isn't me being bitter, by the way. I do not expect a small site like mine to be in this list, but I just found it a little bit stale that we've got the same um, nominees as last year. All of these nominees for content and coverage platform of the year, exactly the same as last year. Liquipedia, yep. Esports charts, okay. Dixerto, yep. HLTV, yep. Dot Esports, okay. Sports Business Journal, Esports Insider, okay. Uh, but you know, I'd like to see Esports Advocate in there and Esports GG, but I do understand Right, that that James at Esports Advocate, he did a tweet, didn't he, the other week saying I don't want to be considered for or be a part of the Esports Awards when it's uh, got this partnership with Saudi, right? So that'll probably explain why they're not in there. But I do think Esports GG deserves to be in here. I think Mally Strix is a gr uh, Lawrence is a great editor. He's got a good team and they're a good all round site. Esports GG, I would expect them to be in here, really. Um, I'd say they're on a par with Dot, maybe a little bit better, in my opinion. So I'm not sure why they're not in that list, to be honest. And it's quite a long list, isn't there? Breakthrough Player of the Year, Analyst of the Year. Uh, unless I'm mistaken, we don't have um, UK people in here. Although, I don't know who this person is. The Seven Worlds Gaming... I play games like PUBG, okay. No, from Texas, no, okay. Um, so that's that. Now, um, on quick shot, and I'll have a look at this here. Um, we've had a bunch of casters announced, haven't we, for the eSports uh, e World Cup this week. 
No, I won't. Drain, I won't. No, don't don't worry. Keep E in the UK in the UK. Yeah, I will. I will. Don't worry. I won't forget my roots. Jacob House says esports advocate should be there. If Fudge isn't nominated, it'd be laughable. Well, the thing is, um, the thing is on that, uh, Jake, is I, I put a tweet out, like I say, I put this tweet out. Um, why is esports GG or um, uh, esports advocate not in there? And James did say there was no way we were getting nominated this year given our reporting on Saudi Arabia esports World Cup ESL and this statement from me. So I, I did see this, I saw this late because I was away this weekend. I was on this, my friend Stag do abroad. So I was late coming back to this and I forgot about this to be honest. But James did say, um, Given our coverage of the Esports World Cup, ESL and Saudi government, I respectfully decline any and all participation. It would be unethical to accept an award sponsored by a Saudi government-backed project when less than 20 miles from the site of the Esports World Cup, political prisoners are being mistreated and the government being linked to the uh, murder. And, I, pff, when I say this on stream, you can read it, right? Uh, other writers in our organisation are free to make their own decisions on accepting declining awards so I respect James's decision and Jake I think that's why they're not nominated uh, because he's asked not to that's, that's my opinion anyway because SBJ being nominated is I understand it right the awards are based on the past 12 months as I understand it right so SBJ had Kevin here obviously doing work there and doing some good work there um, he's not there anymore and Ollie Ring pointed out to me earlier um, where is it sports business journals free articles in 30 days make them a worthy nomination obviously uh, he sarcastically said, and he said, pretty sure since Kevin moved on, they literally don't have anyone working on esports. So I get the esports award uh, nomination is for based on their past 12 months, but it's a bit of a shame to nominate a site that's done three articles on esports in a month. Um, that is a shame, but it is what it is, right? I can't complain um, too much. So, yeah. I'll uh, get that off my chest. MQS said James James Fudge has uh, James Fudge James Fudge has very quickly become my second favourite esports journal. And how subservient you are to MBS. Ollie is great. Um, Jake says I don't think awards should let you opt out of being nominated. Well, I don't know. I, I can see both sides. I Jake, when I did the UK Esports Awards years ago, the first year before I got out because it was too stressful there was someone who um, was nominated a lot was is, is really good at what they do deserved to be nominated and for whatever reason I don't know why I still don't know why but they DM'd me saying please can I not be nominated and I don't know why but I didn't want to like I didn't want to pry or anything like that I sort of just respected it so I took them out because they asked um there may be reasons, right? Maybe some people don't want the limelight. Maybe some people just don't like... I will say, I was having a good chat with someone earlier in DMs. I'm not a fan of politics, of uh, esports awards things, right? You know, I'm not a fan of the politics of things. Not of esports awards. Awards in general should celebrate talent. That's it for me. That's it's what it should do. Recognise the best people in a specific field. And I know politics are everywhere, but I just it's a shame that politics gets in the way, right? Because this is politics getting in the way, isn't it? Of a of an unbiased esports awards show. And you could argue it's the organisers' fault because they've partnered with the esports world. He's tagged the wrong esports world cup there, and he what's he done here? This, this account is temporarily restricted. That's not the actual one, is it? I, 
it must be being misused because it looks like it's this one EWC underscore EN maybe they, they changed their tag anyway um, I think they've changed their tag haven't they because there's a lot of people tagging them here and it's the wrong one this is it anyway yeah it's a shame that politics gets in the way Tobias says, might be extreme. Uh, James is my favourite journalist. But James is really good. Oh, extremely biased. Yes. Hey, Tobias, thanks for joining the stream, by the way. Um, Charlie said, these award shows are never really unbiased and never can be. Always beholden to the company's bottom line at the end of the day. Yeah. I really like James. I really like. I actually remember James, you know doing bits uh, doing journalism here and there but he's sort of flying under the radar a bit what i like about james over the past year is he has been tweeting more he's been getting more uh, prominent on twitter on social media he's been doing more work um, but i always sort of respected him i always saw him doing the occasional thing and then he had a crack at properly doing esports advocate didn't he so um no i'm glad and what i like as well about james is exp is experienced you know, and I think we need more experience in esports journalism. We've got some good experience, but we need more of it. Tobias says he did a lot of editing at um, Esports Observer and Sports Business Journal. Now he's set free. There we go. And I think there's some similarities between James and myself because I think I'm a better editor than I am a journalist. I, I like editing people's work. Uh, you know, I like when people send me uh, guest opinion pieces. I I can um, where is it here? You know, uh, one second. You know, when people send me pieces like this about insomnia, I like editing it. I like pulling the pull quotes out. I like helping them with their structure or making suggestions and checking for uh, spelling errors. Uh, I miss, I'll tell you what I actually miss, I didn't think I'd ever miss this, is proofing pages, you know, when I worked in magazines, um, you know, and the, the designer would lay out a page, the writer on your team had, had written it, and then it gets passed to you, and then you read it on page, you suggest different subheadings, you suggest different box outs, or whatever, different headlines, you check for spelling errors you make sure the page numbers the paginations there I quite miss that it's quite therapeutic and I've done so much of it over the years I've got good at it and I like editing uh, journalism good journalism requires a lot of time and unfortunately I don't want this to come across as oh Dom's just making excuses with my three kids and all the work and everything I just don't have a lot of time for the investigative stuff unfortunately I've got things on my list that from weeks ago that I need to get on with. Uh, and it's tough. It's really hard. Um, but that won't all, always be the case. My kids will grow up one day. By that point, I'd like to have a team. I can't afford a team at the moment, but I hope to get to that point. You know, stuff like this. I like editing stuff like this. Um, you know, this is Rhys uh, Barrett's top 10 UK Counter-Strike talent. You know, thinking of the layout finding the images, getting the pull quotes. Like I like editing. Anyway, I'm going off on the tangent, aren't I? But yes. Jake says, journalism, if you want to do it properly, quote unquote, isn't a great job for people that want free time. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I'm, um, that's someone, uh, that is something that, um, <laughs> there's James on the timeline again. Um, that is something that, um, what's his name? David Ornstein says. David Ornstein is, my, is a little claim to fame for me because we both went to the same uni at the same time. He was in the year above me and we both worked on a student paper. And here I am with my six, seven K followers writing about uh, little UK sports. And here he, there he is with three million followers breaking massive stories about Premier League football clubs and Arsenal and so on. And he said that he's, he's um, I've had him. He's helped me with like guest content for some of the um, journalism lectures I've given at universities and so on. And in his little videos, he's passed to students. He said, you know, when when he said to students, when people go home for Christmas, when people go home for the summer break, 
that's where you get in there. That's when you do the extra work, right? That's where you put your work in, you reach out to editors, you work on stories, and that's when you start breaking things and, and setting yourself apart from um, other students. And then he said, you know, when you do get a job, you keep doing it, right? Leave no stone unturned. You, you just don't have much free time. You've got to enjoy it, haven't you, guys? You've got to enjoy journalism to be good at it, I think. If you don't enjoy it and it's just a nine to five, sure, you can do some good content, but you're not going to be at the tip top, are you, of it? By the way, we've had a crazy week, haven't we? I should probably talk about the... the um... What's the rules with Twitch? Can I talk about banned streamers? I don't think I can, can I? I don't think I can. Maybe I shouldn't do, talk about uh, he who I'm not sure I can name. Right, you'll have to let me know someone. I can't, I've read the Twitch TOS so long ago I can't remember it. Drain says, imagine David Ornstein tweeting about League of Legends transfer rumours. Well, he would have a big following when he's got... A, uh, well, he, he would confuse his, his followers, that's for sure. He would confuse his followers. Anyway, Esports World Cup. Let's uh, let's talk about this. I know I've, I've got onto this late. I've been streaming for a blooming hour. And I'm getting onto this. So, the 12 of you that have stuck around, I'll share some of my views. So, this is new here. Esports World Cup. We're getting loads and loads of talent announcements, aren't we? This week. And it's interesting to see how different games followings react to the talent announcements this is a call of duty hey jake's in the chat jake what's your views on this what kind of response have you seen to this this looks positive this i haven't seen a negative comment yet here the call of duty reaction is the most positive i've seen uh, no maven and merc there's there's no negative here why is that, Jake? Can you explain to me why that is? Is it because there's less virtue s signalling in, in Call of Duty esports than there is League? Less backtracking from talent? I don't see many talents sharing their opinion, strong opinions on things in Call of Duty. Uh, sorry, this is the Warzone one, I should say. This isn't. This is Warzone. Jake says, good people on the Warzone one. Response to Warzone will always be positive. More and more for free one will be slightly mixed, but mostly positive. They don't know or care as much. Got to remember it's heavily in a yeah. Yeah, wow, this is the most positive I've seen. This is really positive. No one seems to care. You're right. And it's and it's you've got to remember, like I was thinking about this the other day. I'm an overthinker. The reaction we're seeing to the Esports World Cup casters in League of Legends which I'll come on to in a bit you know this is the same company uh, running the Esports World Cup that own um, Newcastle United isn't it people aren't talking about Newcastle United and getting crazy about oh you work for Newcastle United club shop or you do this for Newcastle United and you should be ashamed we don't hear any of that um, they don't care as much in football do they about this I'm not saying that's right, wrong or right, but they're just it's just less um they're less bothered. Yeah, this is really positive, isn't it? So this this is all new. Wow, okay, Tyler One. This has just been announced. Tyler One is uh, is, is gonna be at the Esports World Cup opening show. And Danny Aarons as well. Danny Aarons is he's a UK guy, isn't he? Danny Aarons? I don't know him that well. Does he do football content? I think he is. Yeah, I, I think he's a, a British guy, Danny Aarons. He's a big YouTuber, isn't he? What response have we seen here? There's one here. Huge L, especially considering you just had a little girl. Saudi Arabia condemns women to be second-class citizens. Sad to see you take this gig from a country who limits the choices and freedoms your girl would have if she grew up there. So you can see the responses are very different in League of Legends, isn't it? So 
someone says at least Tyler isn't virtue signaling he's pro women's rights LGBTQ etc just take the bag and shut up about it forever SL thank you for following the stream appreciate it yeah so uh, it's I, I'm I want to do I need to do a big roundup article um, at some point, because I've just done an article on the League of Legends stuff, but there's so many caster announcements in there. I mean, this one, I didn't even see this. Um, initialize, uh, UK caster, of course. Initialize, uh, really nice guy. Uh, been a good supporter of Esports News UK over the years. Um, and there's a few others here. I don't know Katie Bedford and, and Jay's that well. I don't know them that well. And obviously, quick shot as well. Quick shot. He looks like he's heavily involved now in the esports World Cup. He's doing the opening show host, and he's also um, whoops. He's a primary host for the esports World Cup on a total of nineteen different games on the supplementary stream. And this was really uh, poorly received. Um, because Quickshot was one of the was one of the people who who um, criticised Riot's partnership with the neon Saudi mega city, and um, you can see here some of his comments here. Let me zoom in a bit here. All right. Someone said four years ago he was close to walking out the LEC. Now he gets that money because he's broke because he got dropped by the LEC. Blah blah blah. Um, it's just weird, isn't it? I, I'm I'm someone who's usually a fence sitter, and I can see. I think it's fair for people to call out hypocrisy, but at the same time, I also think people are allowed to change their minds. I might be in the, you know, I might get some stick for that. I think people are allowed to change their minds in four years. Their, and their stance on things. Four years is a long time. Um, at that point, you know, Quickshot maybe didn't think he was going to get, uh, you know, he was going to leave the LEC or get booted out of the LEC. We don't know the 100% reason for sure, but it looks like, you know, it was partly to do with that, um, uh, a dance he did saying, do the H dance, come on. Uh, and now deleted Twitter video after that was posted and deleted he wasn't working on Riot with Riot anymore anyway that's a separate thing but yeah I can kind of see both sides I think all I will say and this I can't change the internet but if people are going to criticise you know you don't need to be nasty nasty you can criticise people in a you know a, a, a civil manner I might be in the minority there. Let me catch up on the chat here. Hang on. Oh, you can talk about banned streamers, just not show them or have them in a call or anything. Right, okay. Yeah, response to Warzone 1 will always be positive. Um, Infinity and Enigma, both UK. Yeah. Oh, he's a Spurs fan. Is that Danny Aaron's a Spurs fan? Oh, no. Oh, no. Hang on a minute. Sam, are you still in the chat? Forever said, did any of the Into the Breach guys come here crying about the old logo usage yet? Uh, unless I missed it, no. But do you know why I've got an old logo? Let me explain to you why I've got an old logo in there. Let me zoom out a bit here. I've got an old logo in this because... There are so many images in the back end of Esports News UK. I don't want to keep adding each year. Oh, we've got a new logo, we've got a new logo. And then I've got to go back, remove the old one, update the old articles. It's too much effort. Just look, this is in, this is in the back end of Esports News UK. It's nice and easy. It's SEO. When I search for Into the Breach, this logo comes up. And this logo is what gets put in. And I checked, actually, because I did notice it looks quite old, right? I did check. It's still pretty similar, isn't it? So I thought, well, it's so similar, I'm just going to go with it. Is it the font that's old? I think it's the font, isn't it? Oh, if Sam did moan, I missed it. <laughs> Do 
Jake says, I think people are refusing to accept nuance in the discussion. Yeah, you're right, Jake. You are right about that. Um, this re reaction to quick shot was extremely negative here. Uh, he said, um, the show I'm hosting will cover every game and broadcast four days a week, so I won't be doing any casting. I'm excited for this opportunity. Get back behind the desk and interact with a bunch of new games and communities. I hope to see you on stream soon. Um, just extremely uh, negative reaction. Well, there's some positive, but there's a lot negative as well. You know, calling out quick shots. Um, criticism of the Riot Neon partnership and all of that stuff. So it's actually quite mixed, really, but mixed to negative, I'd say. Let's go get that blood money, someone has said here. So you support Saudi Arabia's sport washing. Money is more important than values and basic human rights, all of this stuff. And I think this is going to continue. Uh, people are saying MSI, right, is apparently MSI, League of Legends MSI is going to be at Saudi next year. So some people are saying if, okay, not every cast is going to be involved this time, but what about next year when we get we keep getting more big events there, you know? Um, you know, I, people are calling out hypocrisies. I think what some people who are angry about this are saying is like, when there's someone involved or working for the Esports World Cup or taking money from the Esports World Cup, and they previously criticised teams for being involved in the Esports World Cup or others for being involved in the Esports World Cup. People don't like it, you know. And this is like literally uh, days before they were announced. So it's not like a four-year gap. I think people are allowed to change their mind in four years. But, um, yeah, you know, like Don Jake pointed out here, right, these, these announcements from the talent at the World Cup are so similar. Working at EWC in Saudi, excited to cast some of the best teams in the world. Hashtag. I'm going to be working at the EWC in Riyadh next week. Excited to see how these match up have changed since I'm inside. I'll be running the desk for EWC with these familiar faces. With the best teams in the world here, let's see who ends up on top. Excited to cast at my first international event outside of Korea since 2022. Uh, most interested to see if T1 can match up to BLG in the current form. Like they're very similar. Um, controlled uh, messaging, isn't it? You don't get that so much with you know tournaments outside of Saudi you do a little bit but it's you know and when I saw this it really reminded me of this here people tweeting about upcoming upcoming annual festival of esports world cup will take place in Rio next summer esports world cup was just announced to take place in Riyadh next summer the world's leading games all in one event Esports World Cup in Riyadh will be amazing to visit. Ready for this and all the different games they will have starting in the summer. Like they're all very similar. Uh, it's all very similar wording, isn't it? Yes, Jake makes me laugh. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I, this, there's a, there's a, who were the other um, talent announced in the League of Legends? Well, I've covered the League of Legends one because, you know, it's one of the main games I cover. There's a lot of other games, obviously. Now, a lot of these, a lot of these uh, broadcasters, casters and hosts are from the K Korean English LCK broadcast. Orcs from the UK. Um, Valdez, Jushi, A Atlas, Wolf, and so on. And so... From this as well, Chronicler, who's on that broadcast, people noticed Chronicler is not part of the Esports World Cup and people were praising him for that, uh, for being one of the only LCK English casters who's not part of this Esports World Cup talent lineup. And Chronicler has previously said he'll never work at any event that's directly tied to the Saudi government, nor any other government that's actively violating human rights on a systemic, systematic scale. He hopes this event is a one-off and doesn't become a constant in league esports. So yeah, I've gone into more detail here. I've also listed the teams taking part. We've got Fnatic taking part. There's only eight teams involved. It looks like it's sort of going to like a straight knockout thing, I think. 
uh, co-streaming. We've got Fluke here, the Siege UK caster, calling this out here. Uh, Esports World Cup co-streaming sort of guidelines saying you, you create a positive and inclusive environment ensuring proper moderation of your chat and inform your audience that any views, thoughts or opinions expressed do not represent the Esports World Cup Foundation. That's interesting, isn't it? Why do they not want individual views being expressed? Uh, sorry, you know, you don't want the, the co-streaming talent views to be mixed up with the Esports World Cup's views. And yeah, so Fluke has called that out. Um... And this as well, I, I spotted this in the press release, and James James Fudge again spotted this because he tweeted about it. Pepsi is going to be the naming partner of the Falcons venue called Falcons HQ by Pepsi. And James tweeted saying, why is that a thing? If, if Pepsi has partnered with the Esports World Cup Foundation, uh, Falcons have said or you know haven't been clear who's funding them. Uh, I don't know the full ins and outs of that, right? But some people have said, or believe, this, uh, this I don't know if it's 100% true, but some people have said Falcons is a team funded by Saudi, funded by the um, Public Investment Fund or whatever it is. You know, why would they do this? So I've asked about this. I've asked a, a contact of mine at Falcons. I haven't heard back yet. Um, you know, there's conflicts of interest, isn't there? Anyway, so yeah, I, I mean, initialize. Let's see if initialize how if, if, if initialize has tweeted about it. I'm heading out to the Esports World Cup. You'll see me covering League of Legends, TFT, and uh, Honor of Kings. Excited to cover. As excited again, isn't there? Is, is this been signed off? Excited to cover some of the best teams and players around the world. Get to work with stellar talent from across so many titles. This is positive. This is positive for um, a positive reaction to uh, initialize. Not a massive reaction, but it's a positive one. So, yeah, there's been a lot. Of, there's been a lot of talent announcements. Haven't there? There's too much. I haven't been able to keep up with it, to be honest. These look like there's more qualifiers going on as well. See, so yeah, I saw there was a Dota announcement as well. Let's see. Let's go down to the Dota announcement. Uh, this is it here. Tsunami, Shiva. We've got OD Pixel from the UK. And a few others as well. Uh, Jenkins, Slacks, all these big names. And people helping remotely. You've got some UK people in here as well. T Governor, Gareth. Um, and again, this this isn't very negative. It's the League of Legends lot, isn't it? They're reactive, reacting negatively, which I find interesting. Although I, I don't think have the Counter Strike um, talent been announced yet. I don't think who's this one here. That's League of Legends, yeah, I've done that. But yeah, you know, I could go into more. Um, I won't dwell too much on the reaction. You can tell it's negative. I've done an article on it. I'm interested to see how the, the World Cup broadcast is received. Let's see what's the Twitch chat going to be like, all of that stuff. And on a more light-hearted note, before I go, who's seen this Esports World Cup trophy? And I saw a bunch of people and on Reddit uh, posting about this, saying, oh, this is the leaked Esports World Cup trophy, and it looks like something else. Tee -hee 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 -hee. It's not leaked. right? This was announced back in October last year. I don't. People can't seem to Google or check things these days, can they? That looks less dodgy to me. This trophy, it looks 
kind of like the World Cup football trophy, kind of. You know, this leaked one, it almost looks like it's been edited. It, it, it looks a bit weird, but this one looks a bit better to me. So anyway, um, you know, people thinking it's funny, blah, blah, blah. Let's catch up on chat before I go. All oh, right, Forever's just playing. Sorry, I get what you were saying now, Forever. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah, um, if you guys want to send me, if Into the Breach want to send me a newer logo, by all means, please do. It just needs to be landscaped for my site, otherwise it gets all cropped out. Charlie says it's just another era of esports taking money from sketchy sources. To be honest, yep, I agree. It's not like we're not coming off the back of a gambling wave, crypto wave. Before that, we had people complaining about Chinese money. Esports financial ecosystem is deeply broken and has been for a long time. Hey, Alex, how's it going? How are you? Alex, have you seen all this esports engine stuff, by the way? I I, I didn't cover this. I mean, I've... Um, did I retweet? Uh, uh, yeah, this, I think this is it here. Have you seen this stuff, uh, Alex? Because you were, were with Esports Engine, weren't you? There's quite a detailed article uh, from James on the um, Vindex's sale to ESL Facet Group. And it's around, um, I don't know the full ins and outs of this, but this, this is quite complex, right? It's I, I think it's to do with the people that had um, equity in the company and should they have received more money and so on. So it's quite a detailed article. So you might be interested in that as someone who um, worked there. Yeah, we've had... Do you know what? Let me... Just before I talk about the streamer that's been... Uh, had all that stuff going on this week. Let me just check something because I just want to. Okay, yeah, I was I was looking I was looking into it too much. I was a bit too um, apprehensive, but I can talk about. Uh, Doctor Disrespect, because I saw obviously all of this stuff happening. Let me just. It's been a crazy week, hasn't it? So, uh, Slasher did a big piece on um, Rolling Stone magazine about Doctor Disrespect. Knew he was sending explicit messages to a, uh, a young person. Uh, and a former Twitch employee said he indicated that this was no problem and just carried on with the explicit messages. Um, so yeah, that that's worth reading. Oh God, it's not going to let me. Oh yeah, it's going to. Um, that's worth reading. Uh, I tweeted this out as well. I've let, uh, you know, it's not really something I'd cover unless there's a UK angle. I could have done an article on maybe like you know, UK sports and streaming community reacts to this news or shed my opinion on it. I think there's so many like other bigger global journalists covering this, uh, you know, covering this world much better than I'd be able to. So I'm leaving them to it, like the, the slashers of the world and all of that stuff. But um, yeah. It's a tough one, isn't it? And no one can be defending him, surely, after these latest things um, have come out. Hey, Empathize, how are you? Yeah, Alex but said, all good, just got back from work. I read a little bit, but haven't had a full read yet. Oh, Charlie, the line's about Belong. Well, I I should message James, because I'm not sure if he fully knows. But Belong is still going in the UK, isn't it? And this is this is uh, reading like it's completely gone. Um, where is it here? Uh, it was spun off into its entity as a result. Belong laid off stuff and shut down. It's, no, no, it shut down in the U.S., didn't it? But I know James is very U.S. focused, 
because I remember doing an article on, <coughs> excuse me, um, wow, this was a year ago already, my God, I probably need to um, have a catch up with Belong, see how things are going, I don't know, I get the feeling they're not super popular, but that's just my hunch, I don't know how many they have. Um, this time last year, I probably would have put. Um, did they, have, they had like 20 at one point, didn't they? So I wrote last year that the Belong Arena's UK website currently lists 27 store locations because Belong in the UK is still owned by Fraser's Group, right? Which owns Game. So there were 27 arenas last year. Now, as about the same, isn't it? 13 20 30 although I might not have counted Northern Ireland so it's about the same it's, I mean if I was 20 if it was 27 last year across the UK uh, including Scotland Wales Northern Ireland and now it's 30 they've actually opened more then so you'd, you'd hope that business is healthy but I'm not 100% sure Alex says you mean big dog um, effing over the little people I'm not surprised one bit yeah hey brass no no I kid I kid yeah no I, he's been doing some crazy uh, weird announcements recently I'm quitting YouTube I know I'm not quitting YouTube he seems to be a bit all over the place Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, you thought they were funny. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I do. Um, uh, I would like to buy the UK Masters domain. Um, Charlie, the person you should reach out to while you're here on the stream, um, let me just check. They're a really friendly person. Um, what is their name now? Johan. Oh, I don't know if it's Johan or Johan. It's J-O-H-A-N. Um, one second. That's your contact. Do I reach out to that person there? Johan Keeley, esports and community manager at uh, Belong, has been um, very helpful to me. Uh, is, he, is he still at Belong? Yeah, there we go. Wow, eight years he's been there. Belong's been around eight years, has it? My God. Bloody hell. Where the hell has the time gone? So he's been there pretty much since day one. He was a Belong assistant manager, uh, uh, assistant arena manager for the York Vikings. Now he's doing esports and community manager. So if you find the Belong Discord, um, let's see if I can share. Uh, I don't think I've got you on Discord. Oh, it's hard for me to think. <clears throat> Let me just put this in the Twitch chat for you and talk to him in the Discord if you're not already, uh, Charlie. That might be able to help help you. One second. Let me just get rid of this minute because it looks all horrible. One second. There we go. That's the Belong Discord there, so you can talk to, um, you can always talk to him there. Um, let me know if you get the UK Masters domain, that would be pretty cool actually. Empify says, I look at my article every now and then three years ago. Wow, three years ago. See, and this is, if I'm crazy, is still in the chat. I like to promote up and coming talent. Yeah, you, you were raided by the 100 Thieves pro player, right? Hiko. Oh no, I think my kids are waking up. I'm going to have to go soon, uh, people. And it's quite late, isn't it? If I don't go to sleep soon, I'm not going to get much sleep because I know they'll be up at 6am or 7. Um, 
keep me posted on stuff, Empathize. What are you what are you doing uh, these days? Oh yeah, you're into the breach, aren't you? I remember I did an article on the Into the Breach, signing you and, and a bunch of other streamers. Wow, that was a year ago already. Do you, are you still doing streaming stuff? Yeah, Drain, I need to go to New Meta. I need to go. One of my writers and friends in the industry, Hannah, she works there and, and speaks highly of it. Oh, he wasn't there from day one. Okay, okay. But that's a long time now, isn't it? Eight years there. M5 says I actually doing. I'm actually doing management training at a restaurant, but I've been looking at taking a different direction to get back into the space. It's hard. It is so hard. I mean, I've thought a few times of doing it part time again. I don't know how I'd do that because I don't have enough time as it is now. But uh, it's not super sustainable. I'm lucky I've got this thing with Gigi Bit at the moment, so I can. That pays my bills for a few months, but then it's like it's on to the next thing, you know. And as a small independent site, I can't charge silly amounts. I wouldn't anyway. Just morally, I just wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. So I can't charge a lot. So it's tough when I don't have a sponsor in. I do worry about. Oh right, okay. What happens in like two months' time? It's tough, but I don't want to give up. And I've always said to myself as well, I want to get to at least 10 years. So next October will be kind of unofficially, I could say it's longer than 10 years, but next October, sorry, to October, October 2025, I'd have been doing Esports News UK 10 years or over 10 years. And I, I want to do an audio book, oh, um, audio book. I want to do like an ebook. I guess I could do an audio book as well on like, a decade of UK sports and reporting on UK sports because I think I'd have some interesting insights. It'd mainly be like covering behind the scenes as a journalist, and I'm I'm not going to hold back in that book. I'm gonna I'm gonna write it and tell it like it is, and um, I want to get I want to at least get to that point and then see how I'm feeling then. But I'd wish, you know, part of me wishes I could have funding so I could have a team, and um, but then a larger part of me doesn't want investors because I've I've dodged I've dodged some bullets put it that way from some people that have wanted 100% and they always, always want 100% of the site they're not interested in 10 20% they all want 100% and I've dodged a lot of bullets I'd never sell 100% unless I made the decision to get out of esports but even then I want to, I'd make sure I'd want to sell it to someone who is um you know, and can show me that they're passionate about journalism and they care about UK sports. Anyway, that probably won't happen, right? I'll probably be here for a long time. Alex says the UK esports engine team is now bare bones, I can imagine. Um, yeah, Empathy says I had to put streaming on the back burner to pay bills, but I want it so bad. It, it, it's hard, isn't it? It's really hard. And don't feel bad for that, by the way. You know, there are a lot of people working in esports, in UK esports, as a fun part time, you know, spare time thing, and it can be that. It would certainly be that for me uh, if I wasn't able to do this full time. Al oh, Drain says, I've spoken to Hannah about you. She's lovely. You should have gone for Ruddy's thing. I'm like, I couldn't make it. Unfortunately, it was a school night. I had the kids. I couldn't get to London on time from where I live. I'm like two, three hours away from London, which is annoying. Yeah, well, good luck, Empathy. ZMS says we need to talk then. We do need to talk. We do need to talk. I feel bad, um, Damon. Everyone, thank you for your... Um, like I say, mid-July, I'll be I'll be freed up. I forgot to say this earlier. I'll be freed up a bit more from mid to late July because my deal with um, my GGBet articles will be done by then and I'll have less... I'll have slightly fewer commitments at that point. Um... I'm at an event, I'm at British Esports Student Champs helping with some content for them in a couple of weeks doing some interviews and things with players. Um, after that and after the GG Bet articles, I free up a little bit because I, I want to do it properly for you, you know, um, and shout about what you're doing. But that's it from me. 
everyone. If I mean, if anyone has any other questions for me before I go, let me know. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I've retweeted over the past week. ESR Film Festival is coming to Lisbon at uh, new MOBA type battle rail game uh, called Supervive. That looks interesting. The setup this is from Fury Croft Games, a studio set up by former Blizzard writer and Bungie execs. I mentioned the podcast, Final Fantasy stuff, interviews I've done. Uh, this game thing is not worth talking about because G Gfinity did an article. This I found this a bit odd. This Gfinity did an article. I know Gfinity do news and stuff now. I always think of them as esports and. Um, tournament organising all the stuff they did before oh right oh hang on a minute they pulled the article interesting they have pulled the article wow that is interesting Yeah, they pulled the article. That's crazy. So, Gfinity did an article four days ago, um, which said, UK retailer Game plans to remove all physical video game sales from stores in a controversial new move. When I saw that, I was like, wow, this is this is big news. Like, props to you, Gfinity. I can't remember, the, can't check now. I can't uh, check the name of the journalist, the reporter that wrote this article. But when I read it, I was like, wow, that's a big story game are, are not going to be selling physical games anymore or consoles they're only going to be selling toys merch i don't know game cards you know maybe controllers and i was like well that's quite a big move and I, i'm thinking i kind of understand it but they've got a monopoly on that market so does it fully make sense if you if you want a console and you want a bunch of games uh you know, yes, you can get them in supermarkets, but you, you're more likely to get the game you want in game, right? So, I wasn't sure about that, and literally within hours, um, Eurogamer did an article saying, uh, well, they did an article based on the Gfinity report and said, "Hey, we've contacted Game for more info," and then literally half an hour later, forty-five minutes later. It said, Game has categorically denied the report published early today, which stated the chain would stop selling box games and consoles in stores. They said in a statement to Eurogamer, we continue to sell a wide range of box games in stores and online. This reporting is categorically not true. Um, so, and they said there's no change to its policy with regards to the sale of physical games and consoles. Right, so... It looks like Gfinity got this either got it wrong, or I know probably what's happened here. If if you know if it may be, I don't want to. I don't know the reporter, but my hunch is that they may be a slightly inexperienced reporter. They've heard it from one source. They've heard it from one person saying, "Oh, by the way, have you heard Gamer going to stop selling games this store?" And they've just run the story um, without checking with enough sources or enough senior sources or trusted sources who definitely know the truth. And oh, for whatever reason, they, yeah, they pulled the article now. And that article it resulted in a lot of other articles coming up. My Nintendo News, Yahoo News, uh, Tech Radar. And look, all the stories are Game Denies, um, the good ones anyway, have updated saying we've, Game has denied this report. There we go. Uh, Nintendo Life updated as well report categorically not true so it's not good for Gfinity I find it weird that Gfinity a company I used to write about a lot organising games and now in the news game and now in the news business that I'm in as well I do find that weird but um, yeah anyway I don't want to like uh, you know I don't want to uh, throw the report under uh a hammer or anything but hopefully you'll learn from that um, it might I mean imagine if it is true and and I can't, I can't see game lying if it was true they wouldn't have commented surely so anyway 
I'm rambling, aren't I? Empathise, have a good evening. Heading off, got to work in the morning. Yep, bedtime now. Yes, I need to go as well. Alex says, uh, you know, Gfinity owns stocking for... Yeah, they own a bunch, don't they? Yeah, I, they own... Um, they own some, like, geeky ones, don't they? Uh, I think. Let's have a look here. Before I go. I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to what they own before I go. Uh... There we go, Gfinity Digital Media is made up of 12 sites. I know Seeds GG is one of them. Where, why are they not why are they not listing their sites here? Oh there we go. Real Sport 101, Epic Stream. I, I don't know Epic Stream. RG. Oh yeah, Fantasy and Sci-Fi. What's this one here? RG. Racing Games, GG. Magic the Gathering Rocks, Stock Informer, Siege, GG, I know them. And I'll tell you what, uh, Forerunner, Stealth, Optional, Gfinity, yeah. So with Siege, GG, something I noticed. What is Forerunner, GG? Halo Esports, wow, I, I didn't even know that. That was a sight. It's not even loading. They closed that site, Alex. That doesn't look like it exists. It's not appearing. That must be closed, that site. It's not loading. Uh, but Siege GG, something I noticed with them. Because these are owned by uh, Gfinity now, right? They're not just doing Siege articles anymore. They're, they're, uh, they are doing Siege articles, but they, I've noticed they've also been doing like Valorant and other things. Unless they've changed it again. So it wouldn't surprise me if that, they, they changed their strategy slightly. Anyway... Oh, it's called something different. They must have changed the name for it then. Still not coming up with anything though. When I'm searching for Forerunner GG, right? It's not coming up. Oh, there we go. Hang on. No, it's not loading. And they haven't tweeted since 2022. They must have closed the site. And these, this is one of the things why I, I wouldn't want investors because they change things and they close things. Uh, and they bring different people in or whatever else. They make changes. Um, anyway, Alex, it would be good to catch up sometime, mate. If you're at an event or anything else, let me know. I've been streaming for nearly two hours, everyone. I'm going to head off. I've got low numbers on the stream as well. Thanks, everyone, for the gifted subs and everything. I, I appreciate it a lot. I hope you all have a good weekend. Uh, I'm not around much this weekend. I've got the kids. I've got my dad's 70th birthday. Lots of family there, so that'll be fun. And, um, yes, looking forward to it. Alex, give me a shout sometime, mate. Give, drop me a DM. It'd be good to catch up with you. You did a lot of good stuff for Ian UK back in the day, and I enjoyed working with you. So, um, yeah, hope all is good with you. Drain, see you soon. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being on this stream a long time, by the way, Drain. I appreciate that. There are some people out there who can listen and put up with my monotone voice for two hours. Um, yes, have a good evening, everyone. Good weekend. Hopefully I'll be back this time next week as well or at some point in the week. And I'll see you all soon. Take care.